on today's episode. For an upcoming project, I need to be able to measure and graph voltage over time, and that time could be several hours, if not a day. I do have a, a multimeter with a serial interface, but I don't really want to tie that up and a laptop for, for that amount of time. So I thought the ideal thing would be to build a little logging device like this volt logger. I remembered that in a, in a previous video, a very simple voltmeter out of an Arduino. Also, I have reviewed this M5 stack module, which has an inbuilt SD card reader. So all we need to do is to use one of the analog inputs, hook it up to a, the voltage divider, which is configured for the range of voltages that we wish to measure, in this case up to 15 volts, and that will do what I need. In this video, I will show you how I put this together and we'll go through the uh, necessary Arduino code. There's really not much to describe about the voltage divider. It's simply a 100K resistor, which uh, goes to the input voltage that you're measuring. And that is connected to another resistor, in this case, a variable resistor, which goes to ground. I've obviously made that variable so that I can calibrate the voltage against a, a meter. Nominally, the value of this will be around 27K. If you want more information, I will link in the description to an excellent video on this subject where you can read all about it, uh, should you so desire. Let's move on now to look at the Arduino code. In our Arduino code, the first thing that we do is to state our includes. Clearly we need the M5 stack, the SPI bus and wire. For the SD card in particular, we need the file system and the SD includes. We're getting our time from the internet uh, NTP server. We need to set up our Wi-Fi credentials. Here you will put in your SSID and password. We need to know the chip select pin for the SD card module. In the case of the M5 stack, this is pin 4. NTP client to get the time and we create our variables to hold the values for the time and for the voltage and then we enter our setup routine. As normal the first thing that we do is to set up our serial port for debugging and other purposes to output uh, data to the monitor, begin our M5 stack and connect to the network. Once we're connected to the network we can go ahead and get our time and having done that, we will initialize the SD card. Clearly this is using the chip select that we defined earlier. We check on the SD card to see if the file that we're writing to, which is data.txt, to see if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then we create it and put a header into the file with the date, the time, and the voltage, and carriage return line feed. If it already exists, then we just append to that existing file. Next, we start the LCD panel on the M5 stack and position our cursor and write our volt logger and our voltage equals. The loop function, unsurprisingly, starts by getting the voltage from the analog pin, which is pin 36, and then dividing that by 4096, which is the, the total number of values possible for that input, times the maximum voltage for 15 volts, and then uh, an adjusting factor. The exact value of the resistor needed to get that voltage range is 28,205. Clearly there's no value near that, which is why I put a, a variable resistor in. Uh, normally you would use a preferred value, which would be uh, 27K. Move our cursor and print the voltage on the screen. We get our timestamp value that we recovered from the NTP server and create our data message which is going to be written to the SD card. So that consists of the day, the time and the voltage. And we print out to our screen that we're saving the data and then append it to the file. There is then a delay which at the moment is set to one second. Clearly if you're going to be taking values over several hours I would probably change that to 10 seconds or 30 seconds. That concludes the loop function, and at the end here we just have the couple of voids which are used to get the date and time from the NTP client. These are fairly standard functions which are just copied from the libraries. Lastly, 
Here is the void which writes to the SD card if the data file doesn't exist. And lastly, the append function, which clearly appends the new data to the end of the file until we decide to stop. And that is all there is to the Arduino code. Now we're ready to upload the sketch to the M5 stack. Double check that the board is correctly set and of course the COM port that it's attached to. Go ahead, compile and upload. Note that I have full debugging enabled for the compilation of the sketch. Here on the output of the serial monitor, we can see that the stack was initialized and connected OK to my local network. It uh, initialized the card and the file didn't exist, so it's written to it. And having saved the first result, it is now appending to the data.txt file. And we can see the date, time, and at the moment, uh, zero volts. If I now switch on my test power, just set to 5 volts, and we can see the output there and the values on the screen. Excellent. Finally, in this video, let's just take a look at how we can graph the data in uh, Excel. First, we go to open our, our text file, and it's going to ask us if it's delimited, which it is with, with commas. We just select commas in there and we can see the output and we can see our values here that we wrote at the top of the file and then obviously the date time and the voltage this is a sample of a battery charge that i did overnight so there are going to be uh, many thousands of samples in here and i would set the sample to every four seconds now if we select the two columns that are of interest just the time and the voltage using Control shift and end that will select all of the values that we need we then go to insert and line 2d line and here we can see the resultant graph we can see that the charge started out at 7.77 uh, volts and over time the voltage rose we can see here the cutoff limit at our 15 volts so it appears that there may be more than 15 volts this battery charger that I'm going to be reviewing has a restore function. Uh, so it's actually pulsing the battery with, uh, with pulses of higher voltage in an attempt to desulfate the plates. But that's a subject for another video.